2 TC. You can only place down two towers in a chimps game for that achievement. To make a box where one of your towers placed down in a chimps game gets 2 million pops or more. Two of the hardest achievements in this game. But what if you can do both in one game? And yes, we're doing it on everyone's favorite map. I'm sure people are tired of me playing Resort, but honestly, this is the map where I feel a lot of two tower chimps and two mega pops can be done without any kind of worry whatsoever or the minimal amount of worry. So we're going to be doing this with the Wizard Lord Phoenix getting the two million pops and Arctic, sorry, Arctic Reese, <laughs> absolute zero with Cold Snap. So let's get cracking. Both of these towers can pop camos. Both of these towers can cover each other's weaknesses, except for the fact that the Ice Tower doesn't really have weaknesses outside of White and Zebras, with which the Wizard Lord Phoenix can handle with, with ease. So we're going to be dealing with that. We have to go bottom path rather than top path for the Wizard Lord Phoenix, so that we will be able to pop cameras with this tower. And soon we'll be going forth with the Ice Tower in order to make it into a 250 Ice Tower. But that is still quite far away. You probably think to yourself that we need to put the Ice Tower far away so that the Wizard Lord Phoenix can get the 2 million pops. Well, truth be told, you do not need to place it in a secluded spot. We're going to be placing it here. And this is literally not even going to get... 25,000 pops at all. Our lovely wizard monkey is going to get the vast majority of a pox, so pops, not pox. The entire purpose of this absolute zero is slowing down and stalling. This is barely going to get any pops. Go to cold snap so that we have both means of targeting camos. I'd like to get some monkey sense going on. Increases pierce, freezes an extra layer, and freeze lasts longer. Don't mind if we do. Although, when it comes to the extra layer bit, how does that even apply? Because as far as I know, if you freeze an extra layer, does it mean that we give two damage rather than one? Because we're still only doing one damage. So what does that mean, actually? Or, or... If there's any kind of additional effects like permafrost, does that last for another layer? Let's get water fire, and then after that we'll finally get some monkey sense. I was supposed to say some sense there all together. These two towers, while being opposites, they complement each other very well. Especially with these purple bullets, because our water fire magic won't be able to do anything against it. But our beloved cool tower here we'll be able to circumvent the wizard's purple problem by popping the purples itself. Literally one of the main assets behind the ice tower, just so that we'll be able to target those pesky purples. Imagine if the purples were also immune to the cold. Now that, that would completely remove the need of a white tower, sorry, a white balloon or a zebra balloon, because, well, the entire purpose of a white a balloon, sorry, is so that it's immune to any cold base attacks. So if you give the purple balloons ca sorry, cold immunity, then there'd be no point to them. Arctic Wind not only gives a slow aura, but if you do fancy putting some land monkeys on water, you can do that. Although not in this run. Absolutely not. Yeah, so this is where we need both towers to work well together if we're going to succeed in this. But next up will be Dragon's Breath and then Snowstorm. Going top path with the Ice Monkey will also mean it can target Camo Balloons, which is another reason to go top path rather than just Permafrost, which in and of itself is a very, very good reason to go top path. Also in Update 38, Dragon's Breath has become more expensive. That's alright, that's alright. In normal mode, it's another 300. So in hard mode and in popable mode, it will be more than 300. Because it scales by percentage, I believe. Rather than just a fixated price across all difficulties. 
snowstorm is here and everything within the square is going to be encased in either cold or hot properties. Yes, this ice tower should be melted by now by being in sheer closeness to the dragon's breath and wall of fire and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to freeze it while this Moab is within the wall of fire itself. And they both go down. Yes, fire and ice can coexist. Summon the Phoenix is next to be revived for our wizard monkey. And then we'll pursue absolute zero after that. No troubles whatsoever. And if they do get past the wall of fire, well, they'll be permanently slowed down by the aura in which Arctic Wind emits, which is one of the main... See, if we didn't go top path there with the Ice Tower, we would have no means of popping those camo purples. Cold Snap's one of the more recent changes to the Ice Tower, and honestly, one of the ones that makes it a better tower to use both offensively and supportively and 49 hugely populated with balloons but guess what our dragon's breath sorry summon phoenix wizard and our snowstorm cold snap ice monkey is able to deal with these quite nicely so once again use a snowstorm ability while the moab is over the wall of fire and actually maybe we should use the summon phoenix a bit later yeah, because now we have to deal with this without it, but there we go. Use your abilities really well, and you're going to be able to get through this flawlessly. Also, how many pots have we got? 1,268, 34,000. This is... The, the, the amount of pots that this is going to get is going to be very consistent in terms of its rate of getting them. But it's not going to actually just receive a huge amount in one go. Simply because you require stuff like, I don't know, the top path monkey village. The middle path monkey village. The alchemist top path. In order to really boost its power. Even like the overclock doesn't really do a huge amount of size increase in its attack rate. So therefore that wouldn't be a huge opportunity for it to increase its attack potential per time it uses its projectiles also we've now got absolute zero which will be an absolute not zero purchase there ability is so cold it freezes all regular balloons for longer including white zebra and camo and slows mobile class longer and greatly increases the attack speed of all ice monkeys for the duration including itself see that little icon up there it can greatly increase the duration. But this also triggers the Lich so that it can absorb that benefit and restore its own HP. Why am I mentioning that here? Well, it's simply because if you're worrying about if there's anything that could potentially restore a Lich's health that you don't know why, well, see if that little icon is above any of the Ice Towers and You'll be able to see that, but then again, those icons will disappear once Lich absorbs those benefits. So let's see, Summon Phoenix. It's going to bring it down to the blue ones, but then from there, have to deal with the rest with the stationary towers. See, again, we have not got any huge issues whatsoever so far. While this is still getting a fair few pops, I am still not worried. Because remember, we are 62 rounds through this game and we place this tower down very early on. Oh, we're going to need to freeze some of these. And then from there, well, it's going to increase most surely, but it's not going to increase to a point where we need to worry about it getting a huge amount of pops. This is mainly for slowdown, permafrost, being able to deal with purple balloons, etc. But it's not going to be the main thing that's going to allow us to have up. See, those those ceramics would have easily gone past the wizard monkey if it wasn't for the slow aura. More ceramics to the meat grinder. Or the wall of fire. The firewall. No, not the IT kind of firewall, for goodness sake. That thing is meant to keep you safe. But this firewall is going to enable these balloons to no longer exist. Let's see... Uh, we'll use it here. That's... Yeah, we're going to really need that 
Wizard Lord Phoenix as soon as we get 56,700. Because honestly, we're going to struggle without the additional firepower. Not only does it summon a permanent Phoenix, it boosts the attacks of the tower itself by default. So, no downsides to that whatsoever. Look at that. <laughs> Normally just waltz past the firewall there, but yet, with the slow aura, with the freezing, this is just a great combination to have together. Like, there is no... There's, there's nothing that they can really do, these balloons, against this combination that we have in store. Okay, they're making it quite far along the track, but guess what? They still have to have another turn through here without their parent protecting them. <laughs> See, this permafrosted ta balloon here, I say tower there. This is for benefit of permafrost, but then again, in this kind of way, it's a little bit boring. Now, imagine how bad that would be if it was red. No, thank you. Don't want to think about that. Summon Phoenix, deal with some of these small class balloons. Also, both these abilities come back quite quickly anyways. So you don't have to worry about not being able to use the ability at any given point in time. We just use the absolute zero ability and it's already just nearly filled up like that. There we go. Lovely days. More slaughter for these inflated balloons. Inflated airships. There we go. You and your top hat and your claws, you will soon be cooked. But also with a little bit of freeze as well. This actually be a, a great combination against metal. Because the, the fire can heat it up and then the absolute zero can rapidly cool it off. And what happens to metal with that? It becomes extremely unstable when you rapidly cool hot metal. How is everyone loving update 38 so far? Personally, I love Phased. It is a really difficult boss, I imagine, for a lot of players, but it is an incredibly fun boss, and it, it has a thematics about it which I really love. Distortion, space, being able to warp in and out of reality and in and out of non-reality, and also just its trolliness as well when it comes to radar scanners. Like, having default camera detection is the way forward when it comes to Phased because you don't want to rely on radar scanner to give your towers camera detection because phase takes that away from you but also one idea i think that phase should have is that it should have a similar property to lich where it punishes certain kind of attributes but in this case it should punish towers that tries to decamo fire balloons such as signal flare such as archmage such as skimmer such as submersion support and any other kind of decamification because phase wants to camo fi balloons and if you try and take away that camo phase should be like nah how dare you do that i'm gonna disable you and deny you from ever attacking for a short bit of time see the effects of permafrost one of the bfbs is moving slower than the other because i use absolute zero on this one sorry on this one but not on that one this one should be ahead of that one. Wait a minute, is my mouse... No, my mouse is not even enabled, so I can't even show properly. There we go, it should be fixed now. My mouse should now be enabled. Oh, the joys of stuff. Maybe FaZe even edited my computer so that this part is cut. Anyways, we're here, back on the same round, dealing with these camo regrow fortified ceramics. But nonetheless, the slowness of the ice tower along with the hotness of our summer phoenix ensures the total defeat of each and every single fabric of balloon that enters the vicinity of our beloved towers see 7600 i am still not worried whatsoever about this thing getting a huge amount of pops this has been a very consistent stream of pop growth for our absolute zero its main purpose is to store these and absolute zero is going to be an absolute godsend when it comes to a huge amount of mob class balloons on this point in time like my round 98 for example that's going to be a huge round for us to overcome but guess what with absolute zero we'll be able to slow everything down for the phoenix to absolutely annihilate them all round 75 is done i think yeah, it's definitely done. Let's just summon the Phoenix, and then it'll be able to pop some of the Ground 76 just like that. 
And there we go. Round 76 is completely done and over with. Did anyone ever think that fire and ice would be a good combo together? Because together, they would, well, not complement each other really because of their temperature opposites. Like one would melt the other or the other one will, will, um, <laughs> will extinguish the other sort of a thing. It's always a difficult balance between what would prevail between cold and hot. And I'd say everything in the universe always has to go back to the beginning of creation which is nothing and nothing has no heat so therefore i think at the end of the day cold will always prevail heat may always have a step ahead at times but as size says there is no light without darkness Round 78 is coming to a close and there's these bunch of bubble balloons in which if we didn't have our beloved Absolute Zero, we'll be struggling against these. And we've still got these pesky ones to deal with. Also, you know what? Round 95 is also a big issue for our Wizard Lord Phoenix, but because of the Absolute Zero, we don't need to worry about that. I'm not sure as well, but I think Absolute Zero's ability has like a near infinite pierce. When it comes to the number of balloons that it pops, because Psy looks like it has an almost infinite amount of pierce when it comes to its level 20 psionic ability. But I've tested it in free play or in sandbox, sorry, and I've tested it to a point where my computer is literally slowing down to like two frames a second. And it doesn't pop every single balloon on the screen. It has a pierce count, which is very, very surprising. But also, it doesn't mean that it affects everything on the screen at any given point in time. It affects most balloons, but it will never ever affect every single balloon if there are enough of them. Let's see, fortified BFBs turns to fortified MOABs. These are all here. Again, we have not had a single bit of worry. We have not needed to restart at any given point in time. Although these are making it quite Ah, let's see. Yeah, they're done for. They're absolutely done for. If those three didn't go through, then none of these will. <laughs> it's the slow, lonely red one that's going to make it to this point. Although this is fantastic for recharging abilities. So let's see. Deploy that, and this will be permanently stored. Like, permanently. It will always be slower than it usually is. So that has a few cracks in it, in the water Malone. Let's see. Slow that down once again, and some of the Phoenix once again, while the ZMG is over the wall of fire. Make use of your, sorry, make use of that pierce, that maximum pierce of a wall of fire. Let's see, it's got huge amounts of cracks over it. We're gonna wait until it goes to BFBs and until we freeze it. There we go, freeze it again. Do that again. Trickle the health down. Oh, this could be very interesting. Okay, the Phoenix has ended. But guess what? We apply the absolute zero again or to slow these down. And these few balloons will be fantastic in recharging our ability. As long as there's no purples, this thing will always be able to attack. Also, we're one and a half K away from Wizard Lord Phoenix and that'll solve our power problem. Let's see, there's a lot of them on the screen and since all of them are on the screen, let's apply that and each and every single one of these will have the permafrost effect. So we should be able to get the Wizard Lord Phoenix at some point this round. It's just a matter of when, not if. But, come on ability, we need you back. Please? Please, with a really really delicious cherry on top let's see that is not to have oh, there we go and now we have we did have at some point have two of these phoenixes on screen but it's only if you activate the tier 4 ability and then purchase tier 5s just straight afterwards then you have two of these on screen obviously one permanent and one temporary but we have a term sorry we have a permanent phoenix on screen and then the other temporary one from now on will be even more powerful and one was shooting out fire breath, it shoots out gigantic fireballs of molten lava. Which is just absolutely awesome. So these will be our two towers to survive chimps with. The Wizard Lord Phoenix and the Absolute Zero. 
we will see how we get on with this. Still, I am absolutely not worried about the absolute zeros pop count. This is four fifths of a way through the game, and this still has 45,000, sorry, 25,000 left in order to be able to turn the tide and make it so that this run is not too mega poppable. You see how quickly the ability comes back? Like, this looks quite slow, but it's actually pretty quick when you think about it. Think about the power of the ability, and then think about the amount of time it takes for that ability to come back up. It's pretty quickly. And with this permanent phoenix up on the screen, it's really cool. Or really hot, in this case. This is the only really cool thing. Because, you know, it's ass. This is nice. Let's see, round 85, two ZMGs. Just cast our wonderful absolute zero and watch it go to town. I mean, the, the Phoenix go to town, not the absolute zero. The absolute zero is a brilliant means of support. Just freeze them. Permafrosting means they are permanently slowed down. Is it like 25% slowed down permanently? Or if it's like a bigger balloon, then it, the amount of percentage that it slows down the balloon is less in terms of percentage but then it's like zero for the bad because the bad is immune to almost anything except debuffs which enables it to take more damage or the time stop power up or something like that what well, i keep calling it power up it's powers let's see if there's that absolute zero is on the screen the wizard lord phoenix ability is on the screen it took care of three of those four ZMGs, meaning that this is the only one left. Actually, that's fantastic for stalling and for enabling your abilities to come back. It's by having a very, very slow balloon on the screen. Similar to leaving a red on the screen. You know, if you have a red that's just on the screen, you know it's not going to get to the end. Why prioritize popping back? Just pop everything else. Just watch that red balloon slowly come back to your, to your towers and let your abilities recharge. Like, it's a symbiotic relationship between towers and their abilities that they still need to cool down. There's no need to pop that red blue if you can benefit from its slow movement speed and its very, very, very weak status. Round 88 is done. Round 89. Fortified Moabs. Once again, we can freeze these. We're going to save the ability for round 90. And watch the Wizard Lord Phoenix absolutely engulf the DDTs with its mighty fire. You all to go down. It's just a matter of when, not if. Let's see, round 90 is here. And the DDTs, well, they're going to be absolutely cooled and then absolutely charred. The Absolute Zero is brilliant at stalling DDTs as well with its ability. No, there's no context. Contest, sorry, not context. But context is that all of these balloons are annihilated. And that we don't need to worry about any of them. Yeah, the default attack for the Wizard Lord Phoenix increases when it gets to tier 5. As well as the only other benefits, like his ability benefits and stuff like that. Wizard Lord Phoenix is up. Those fireballs, man. This is a hot and cold time. It is simultaneously Antarctica and simultaneously the center of the Earth. Not quite the center of the sun, though. No, that's too hot. Round 93. DDTs are here, and so is the cold. Let's see. Wizard Lord Phoenix ability is up. Timing your Wizard Lord uh, Phoenix's ability could even make or break in this sort of thing. Because remember how it kind of circulates its movement as it spawns like you could make full benefit of it if you enable it to be over the head of balloons at a certain given point in time round 94 as soon as like the second most heaviest round in chimps moving around 96 is also incredibly hefty let's see permafrost with the answer zero in play those fireballs are really decimating them and it's such a blessing that it does that Let's see, absolute zero again. There's nothing escaping this small square right about now. And that's solely because of the absolute zero. The absolute zero is going to town with all of these balloons. 
and it is an absolute delight to watch the carnage as these balloons struggle to escape my grip okay round 95 a huge manner of purple balloons are here but guess what even when they are not hit by the ice tower because of its aura at level sorry tier three it means that they're permanently slowed down to a point where we'll be able to do stuff to them let's see let us put that down and the ddts will crumple into the nothingness just like that uh, this um, this combination is so powerful you gotta try it for yourselves i wonder if any of the other ice tower combinations have a great synergy with wizard or phoenix i don't really think so because the others are more designed for well the top path is designed for extra damage from other towers and the bottom path is mainly designed for well damaging the balloons themselves so i think it's the only truly offensive pathway for the ice tower round 97 two fortified zero mgs let's put those down let's put down the wizard lord phoenix since it will take some time in order to pop these huge monstrosities these are the second toughest kind of balloons in oh sorry the second most healthiest kind of balloons in chimps regular chimps let's see both of them have gone down to bfes the first one's gone down to moabs so let's fly the absolute zero so it slows these down yeah these are tougher cookies to crack but nothing that we can't handle nothing that we can't handle nothing let's see no worries whatsoever oh my god that is not attacking that so not only can quincy's arrows not hit put sorry pink balloons but the phoenix cannot hit fortified ceramics that is a, a noise round 98 the toughest round in the game but guess what we are going to absolutely annihilate all these balloons with the wonderful wizard lord phoenix yeah we're gonna slow this down just so that we have a careful eye on everything absolute zero everything oh this has got 24k it won't reach 25 i believe it won't reach 25k i am very confident with that let's see now absolute zero again slowing them all down Mm, I feel like it's too late now in the round to use another Wizard Lord Phoenix, so we're going to have to just rely on Absolute Zero in order to carry us through the rest of the game when it comes to slowing down these balloons. Although it could be the case where we might have to use another Absolute so another Wizard Lord Phoenix, because this is getting quite quantiful now when it comes to the amount of balloons that are coming out this way. And yeah, Absolute Zero is doing good, but again with all. Oh, this could be bad this could be very bad come on green balloon get popped now oh great the phoenix can't hit green balloons as well isn't that just a wonderful oh, there you go yellow balloon lovely day so let's just activate it early so that these fortified dts are able to go down let's freeze them let's freeze them let's freeze them there we go round 100 this is probably the most difficult round in this scenario use half for one damage let's see wizard lord phoenix hmm we should really use it if we have it because it's going to churn up more damage when the default tower would ever be able to do so let's see maybe we should have used the wizard lord phoenix ability later on in the round so that there's more fireballs hit the bad when the round started who knows let's see another one. Oh, this is good timing actually because a lot of the fireballs will hit the bad here still very very what you would call healthy this bad is and that's not good whatsoever but this phoenix is churning its health down which is good another wizard lord phoenix oh this is good opportunity actually come on bad go down please go down go down please you're being hit with enough five oh no this could be bad actually if this goes into dz's oh gosh yeah this could be really bad actually come on phoenix i'm relying you solely in order to pop these okay so yes the dz's are down that was the main thing i was worried about the dz's could have crept through all of that so hmm i'm gonna wait there we go wait for that 
and we can use the absolute zero in case if they get too close to the edge of a map i don't think that's going to be the case oh the zero g's are really annoying come on come on oh Ooh! no 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 oh gosh i think we could do could oh gosh that was so close <laughs> that was super close with that last red balloon there but you see where the pop is on the top right hand corner flawless we didn't need to restart this entire game once we didn't need to have any restarts, so as in being defeated, we didn't have any retries of a particular round. That was flawless. And our Wizard Lord Monkey, sorry, Wizard Lord Phoenix got 2 million and 6,000 pops. Two towers placed down, with one of them getting over 2 million pops. And look at the total damage as well. We managed to remove some of the balloons on the screen. I wonder if there's something to do with the absolute zero. Nonetheless, I am really happy with this result. And let me know if there are any other combinations of two tower chimps which can result in a two mega pops also. People have been saying that the other tower in question on both YouTube and Reddit was something like Ultra Boost, something like a submarine. But now you got to think cooler than that. And I don't mean you're not cool enough. I mean like cooler in terms of temperature. Fire and ice have prevailed today and have done very, very well. Very well indeed. Tw okay, so this did get over 25,000 pops, but nowhere near close to the 42,000 mark. Although there were some pops taken away, I'm not going to lie. Where did those pops go? Did the absolute zero have something to do with it, with its ability, probably? I don't know. But some of the pops are not being registered. If it was a zilly, I would understand, because the hex ability removes the pops from any child balloons there. But nonetheless, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see next on the channel. Are we thinking about doing a video on why Psy is impossible for a two tower chimps? But how close can you get with Psy to a two tower chimps? Let me know. I love FaZe. Like it's just, also the background of it is brilliant. It's like the Aurora Borealis sort of thing with the, um, what do they call it in space? It's not the cosmos, it's, it's a display of clouds and nebulas. It's like a nebula in space here with the different blues and reds and the stars in the background. I also love the, the rifts that it's causing bending reality. This could be a part of the non-reality and that is reality or vice versa. It's my favorite design of a boss balloon so far. But I think that's just because of the fact I like cosmic distortion rift eating sort of things rift bending also these eyes as well really creepy and they move as well in the game as well if you notice phase its eyes move from left to right it's really creepy what's a lot of the duality of them as well being red and blue like one of them could be hot the other one could be cool oh that could have been other properties as well like sometimes it's resistant to fire and other times it's resistant to cold but then again you would think that resistance to cold would be almost worthless. And resistance to fire could in some cases be very, very powerful. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everyone.